It's time for the big boys to come out and play. I start off at the bench grinder where I can take off a small amount from the outside of a 5 8 inch spade bit as the 5 8 inch hole was too large for the piston of the pneumatic cylinder to thread onto my plywood ram. Half inch, 5 8 modified 5 8 I then took a scrap piece of cylindrical plywood left over from my vice build and drilled a hole in the center. The cylinder is held in my linear actuator vise as I screw on the plywood end. Some vice grips were needed to stop the piston from spinning. I used a leather strap wrench to get some better leverage on the plywood and thankfully the plywood didn't split in half. Once installed I tightened the jam nut on the back and made sure the piston still moves freely. I then took some scrap 3 quarter inch plywood to the miter saw and table saw to cut up the pieces required for the frame of the crusher. A full cut list can be found on my website diybuilds.ca as well as part numbers for the pneumatic components which I purchased from Princess Auto. I begin assembly by adding glue to the butt joint and keeping everything in place with brad nails while coming back with pilot holes and driving in 2 inch construction screws. You can see the bottom piece of plywood is shorter than the two sides as this will allow the crush cans to fall down into a container automatically. Before attaching the end I place the pneumatic cylinder into the assembly to ensure a snug fit. The ends are glued and nailed on, but this time four 3 inch screws hold it in place as about 600 pounds worth of force can be generated by the crushing action. I then lay the unit down with the cylinder pressed up against the back as I lay the top cover in place. This piece only gets screws, no nails or glue because if I need to service the cylinder it needs to be removable. I can then attach the other end piece which again uses four 3 inch screws for added strength. Next I can attach the push button and plumb in the air lines. All the connectors and air lines come from a kit also purchased at Princess Auto and was very simple to use. Obviously having super special helpers will make any project easier, so if you can, pick yourself up a couple of those. I want everybody's hands in their pockets. Oh no! We got it wired backwards. It's coming out. I want it to go out when I hit the button. You see that? The last thing to build is a hopper for the empties to stack up in. I rip some strips of 3 quarter inch plywood at the table saw and then drop my blade to cut two grooves in each side piece. These will accept some 8th inch hardboard on the back side and some quarter inch Lexan on the front side. I can then rip to width the hardboard and Lexan and dry fit them to make sure everything will sit properly. I then drill four pocket holes in the bottom edges of the side pieces to attach the hopper to the crusher. To begin assembly of the hopper, I lay glue in the narrow groove for the hardboard and the larger groove for the Lexan gets nothing. You'll notice the Lexan doesn't go all the way to the bottom. This is to leave room for fingers to get in should anything get jammed in the piston so the hopper doesn't need to be removed should that occur. The assembly is left in clamps overnight and I can begin mounting the crusher to my wall. I use the 3 inch screw through the right side into a wall stud and then with my level on top I drive in two 2 inch screws into the L bracket I have installed on the underside into another wall stud. A quick test of the push button and it's time to mount the hopper with those 4 pocket holes from earlier. The hopper can be loaded up with 13 cans at a time and is very fun and satisfying to use. With the airline hooked up and regulated to my compressor standard 100 psi, the cylinder easily crushes these cans into a neat little puck for compact storage. <laughs> 